Not every antagonist is evil, and I think the best example of this is from my favorite film, Whiplash. Whiplash came out in 2014 and was directed by Damien Chazelle, which became his breakout film. Afterwards, he moved on to other projects like La La Land, First Man, and recently Babylon. While being his first successful movie, Whiplash was actually a passion project for Damien as he would work on the script during episodes of Writer's Block. He never even wanted to send the script off as it felt too personal to him. Eventually, Right of Way Films and Blumhouse Productions would ask Damien to create a short film as a proof of concept, and after being shown at 2013's Sundance Film Festival, the film would be financed for $3.3 million by Bold Films. Now I've seen plenty of good video essays on Whiplash and Andrew Neiman's journey through his obsession, but I want to talk about the real star of the movie. J.K. Simmons' role as Terrence Fletcher. Also, I can't discuss Fletcher's character without spoiling the movie, so if you haven't seen this phenomenal film for yourself, please go and watch it. Now before we get into the antagonist of the movie, we need to know what an antagonist is. To put it simply, it's a person who actively opposes or is hostile to someone or something. I didn't think the dictionary was going to be so vague with it, so let's break it down even more. The main goal of the antagonist is to create conflict with our protagonist, the hero of the story. There are six main types of conflicts that stories use. There's man vs. man, man vs. society, man vs. nature, man vs. technology, man vs. supernatural, and man vs. self. In man vs. man, we have a protagonist and antagonist butting heads against each other like how in The Dark Knight, we see Batman and Joker constantly going at each other physically and challenging each other morally. In man vs. society, we see something similar except it's a group of people or a system rather than an individual. The Pianist is a great example as it's about a Jewish man surviving the Holocaust. In Man vs. Nature, we start to see how the antagonist isn't always a person. Jaws uses a great white shark as its antagonist to terrorize the people of Amity Island. For Man vs. Technology, you can see this in Terminator and the Blade Runner series. Man vs. Supernatural is common in horror movies, as ghosts and demons are a constant antagonist in these films. Finally, we have Man vs. Self, which isn't as used as much as I'd like it to. Shutter Island is a great film showing this, as our protagonist struggles with his trauma and past, unable to move on. Whiplash definitely falls into Man vs. Man, however not like most other films. Terence Fletcher is a band conductor of Schaefer's Best Jazz Orchestra, one of the best orchestras in the country. Fletcher is strict, demanding, and most of all brutal in his methods. Look up here, look at me. Do you think you're out of tune? Yes. Then why the fuck didn't you say so? For the record, Metz wasn't out of tune. You were, Erickson. But he didn't know, and that's bad enough. Even during the opening scene, we see how high Fletcher's standards are and his blunt, straightforward demeanor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So you know I'm looking for players? Yes, sir. Then why did you stop playing? Did I ask you to start playing again? Uh, sorry, I asked I why understand. you stopped playing and your version of an answer was to turn into a wind-up monkey. When he enters a scene, everything stops and he takes center stage. He is a character that is feared and we see why early on in the film. Why do you suppose I just hurled a chair at your head, Neiman? From verbal abuse. I didn't know they allowed retards into Schaefer. Am I to understand that you cannot read tempo? Can you even fucking read music? To humiliation. You are a worthless, friendless, faggot lip little piece of shit whose mommy left daddy when she figured out he wasn't Eugene O'Neill and who is now weeping and slobbering all over my drum set like a fucking nine year old girl. To even physical abuse. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Rushing or dragging? Rushing. So you do know the difference. At first glance, you'd think he was a psychopath who abused his power as a conductor for his own enjoyment. However, that's far from the truth. We see a softer side to him that is easily overshadowed from watching his teaching methods. We see a former student meet with him as a close friend, and even encourage his daughter to be Fletcher's student when she grows up. Hey, when you're a big college kid, will you come play in my band? Would you like that? Be my piano player? Excellent, give me five, baby. 
All right. Thank you. Great to see Great you. Great to see you. I'll see you after the show, All okay? Right, absolutely. We also see him have a real emotional moment as he mourns the suicide of one of his former students. I no wanted you guys to know he was a beautiful player. Showing us he truly does care. But if he cares so much, why does he act so malicious? When Fletcher talks to Andrew for the first time after letting him join the orchestra, he talks about Charlie Parker and how his music career started by having a cymbal thrown at his head. I told you that story about how Charlie Parker became Charlie Parker, right? Yeah. Joe Jones threw a cymbal at his head. Exactly. Parker's a young kid, pretty good on the sax, gets up to play at a cutting session, and he fucks it up. And Jones nearly decapitates him for it. And he's laughed off stage, cries himself to sleep that night. But the next morning, what does he do? He practices. And he practices and he practices with one goal in mind, never to be laughed at again. And a year later, he goes back to the Reno and he steps up on that stage and he plays the best motherfucking solo the world has ever heard. Fletcher only had one goal in mind when it came to conducting. Truth is, I don't think people understood what it was I was doing at Schaefer. I wasn't there to conduct. Any fucking moron can wave his arms and keep people in tempo. I was there to push people beyond what's expected of them. I believe that is an absolute necessity. His methods are no doubt extreme, but to him, that's what separates the good from the great. His intensive outbursts and erratic behavior are his way of trying to find out who has what it takes and who doesn't. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. The truth is, Andrew, I never really had a Charlie Parker. But I tried. I actually fucking tried, and that's more than most people ever do, and I will never apologize for how I tried. We're so used to the standard bad guys in films, the villain who has evil motives because they're just evil or had a one-note tragic backstory. It's always the objectively evil versus the inherently good. However, in life, people are not one-sided. We have motives for our actions, and sure, some of them may have hurtful or selfish intentions but most of the time, it's not that simple. A good antagonist has redeeming features that attempt to justify their goals and actions. Thanos is one of the best examples of this, a man who is so blind by his grief of his home world that he truly insists that he is saving people by eliminating half of them. Even on his journey to this goal, we see him make personal sacrifices to achieve what he thinks a better universe is. Sometimes a good antagonist is less about the person and more about the conflict they cause. Prisoners does an amazing job showing Hugh Jackman's character, Keller, struggling with his morals as he desperately attempts to find the person who abducted his daughter. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Fletcher, however, is a different antagonist altogether. He pushes Andrew to a mental breakdown, not because he's evil or that he's challenging Andrew's morals, but because he wants Andrew to be better. Fletcher tries everything from humiliating him in class to including his rival so Andrew fights for the part harder. Uh... You two know each other, right? Yeah, yeah, Nassau band. Hey, what's up, Andrew? See, this to me is the beauty of Studio Band. You walk in here an alternate, who knows when you could be the new core. Oh my god, you, are you serious? Hey. That shit? Rewatching this movie, knowing Fletcher's intentions, we see plenty of times where he favors Andrew. Even when Conley plays it right, Fletcher still pushes Andrew to get the part instead. What the fuck are you looking for? There's no pot of gold down there. Are you adjusting the seat, really? That's been your fucking problem the whole time, the seat height. So now you have it, right? Go. Fuck you, fuck you. Maybe it's time to finally bring this home. What do you say? The whole reason is because he saw the drive in Andrew and that nothing would stop him. And for the most part, that was true. Yeah, I gotta get my stick. No, 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 stay away from the card. I'm caught 
Oh, no, 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 guys, guys, okay. just a couple more blocks. No, 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 no sir, you don't have to go anywhere. Blocks. Sir, get off sir, me. no, you don't have to. After letting his pride and obsession consume him, Andrew is unable to play. Demon. You're done. After Andrew was removed from the orchestra and caused Fletcher to lose his job due to abusive teaching practices. To make sure that Terence Fletcher is never allowed to do this to another student. They meet once again months later, when Andrew walks by a jazz club and sees Fletcher's name on a sign. Fletcher tries to get revenge on Andrew by inviting him to play in front of one of the biggest music crowds in New York. Tonight could change your life. The folks out there make a phone call. You could be a Blue Note signee, an EMC client, a Lincoln Center core. On the other hand, if you drop the ball, you might be looking for a new line of work, because the other thing about these cats is, they never forget. Except he never gave Andrew the music they would be playing. You think I'm fucking stupid? What? I know it was you. Andrew looked like a fool in front of everyone, and Fletcher knew it would ruin his chances at a music career. Feeling defeated, Andrew walks off stage in tears. But then walks back out with something to prove. What are you doing? Now we're gonna slow it down a little bit. I'm guessing most of you folks have heard. Andrew plays his heart out, and Fletcher soon realizes he finally has his own Charlie Parker. Fletcher's methods may have been extreme, but they made Andrew better for it. When no one in his family believed in him, Fletcher kept pushing because he saw that drive that no one else did. We all need a Fletcher in our lives, someone to see something in us that we don't know we have, and to push us far past what's expected of us. For me, that's my brother Tyler. Over the years, we haven't always seen eye to eye, but for all the times it felt like he was just there to bother me, I know it was because he wanted to push me forward. He pushed me farther than I ever thought I could go. Even when I was mentally in a horrible place, he was still pushing me when I stopped pushing myself. And looking back at how far I've come, I couldn't have done it without him. Before this video ends, take a moment and think about all the people in your life that push you past your limits. Whether their intentions are for better or worse, it still contributes to who you are today, and every time we're pushed, we're one step closer to becoming great. Thank you all for watching. The support you all shown me the past two weeks have been incredible. I'm glad you can enjoy these videos just as much as I enjoy making them. Please leave a comment telling me who pushes you. I'd love to see all of your answers. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. See ya.